we're still a shot over. We're still in the, you know, waiting for that getting written in the book of life for the new year. We're coming on. These are the days of awe. This is the time for reflection. It's always important. You know, it's really beautiful how our traditions help us with things that we're just starting to understand into the later half of the 19th century and 20th century about psychology, right? And what really, how to really help ourselves. We need time to stop all the things that are going on in our lives and to reflect on how we can do better. Like what is our part in the relationships and the experiences that we have in our lives? The world about us is constantly promoting the concept of look outside yourself. Get busy outside. What is everybody else doing? Are you keeping up? Right? Everybody get that? We get that all the time. Everywhere we go, it's in the media, it's in conversation, it's just in our culture so much. But the ancient ways, the spiritual ways, always tell us, come back. Come back and take another look, reflect. And the beautiful thing about this is that, you know, in psychology and in self-help and all those other ideas, there's a lot of doing it on your own, right? Doing it on your own or doing it with one other person, doing that work within yourself. But to do it as community, do it with a whole, you know, everywhere you go, like everything shuts down because why? We're all doing this. We're all taking the time. There's something magical in that. You know, there's something, it's like when the snow first falls, right, and everything is silent because everybody's inside and it's all quiet, you know, everybody's being reflective. They're in their house and really thinking about, again, and, and having a lot of gratitude, no matter who they are, everybody's grateful at the end of a blizzard that they're inside and comfortable and warm. Right? And outside is untouched. So leave the outside untouched and we'll go inside, inside to reflect on what we have, what's going on, what's going on in your life these days. How have you handled some of the situations that are presented to you throughout your life? Think about some of those things. Some of you are handing out papers. We have other papers here. Just if I can get a volunteer that can kind of go around and give out more papers. Here, thanks, Kemi. And um, to give you these papers, to write on them anything as you're thinking about, as I'm speaking, some of the things that come to mind. Places where you feel you did, just didn't do your best, you want a little bit of forgiveness for. Maybe a place of shame that's still in your heart. Or even somebody else you need to forgive. So sometimes it's like it's it's not only about you know us. It's about we're holding on to things for other people. Who do we need to forgive? Who do we need to let go of? And the reason why we do all of these things is because we forget. We forget that at one minute. You know, we, this time of year, we hear a lot of atoning. You gotta atone for your sins. If you do something wrong with somebody else, you have to atone for it. Yeah, you have to apologize, but mostly you have to change. We have to change our behaviors. We have to change the way we think about things. We have to change, as we say many times when we come here, we have to change the old story. Create a new story so that you can go with newness into a new life, into a new world, into a new sense of connection. So going beyond atonement, though, means coming back to at one moment. The key, the element that brings us, the tool that brings us to at one moment is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now, what I've learned in my experience is that in my humanness, I'm not a very good forgiver. Okay? I forgive and remember. I forgive and I don't put it in the book of life. I put it in my book of 
when you got to pay back. Right? Anybody else have a book of when you have to pay back? Right? The other people got to pay back at one point, right? So we, we know what to remind them of. Remember when I did this for you and you didn't say thank you? Remember when you forgot this? Remember when you hurt me? Remember when you? And we go on and on and on. We have these little books that we're carrying around. I can't be one with you if I have this big book of resentments that I'm dragging around with me. And we have this amazing idea that somehow I can hold this little book aside for some people and now be truly present with other people in my life. It doesn't work that way. That book will get in the way of every single relationship that we have in our lives. And mostly, it gets in the way of our relationship with the divine. We forget what the divine is constantly trying to remind us of. From eternity to eternity. For God, we are one. We are what the divine says. We are not what we say we are. The height of arrogance is to think that we are less than who the divine created us to be. And who the divine created us to be is our eternal soul that is not, not limited to this lifetime. A lot of work. It's a lot of things to think about. So as you think about the stuff of every day, you know, I want to uh, present to you too this mantra that was given to Moses at the burning bush. The burning bush, the divine gives to Moses. Yodhe, Yodhe. It's written, people say it's Yahweh, Hashem, all the different ways of God, but yod he vod he. as it was, so it is, and ever shall be. That's the word. That's the message. Now, in the Jewish tradition, you have the you have the, you know, the Torah. Then you have the Mishra, which is commentary on the Torah. Lots of ideas. And one of the ideas in the Mishra is that in the beginning, again, because we're this time of year, we're from in the beginning, because it's a do-over, right? It's a, it's a huge do-over. But the idea is that, that it says that oh, we created them. We created them. Like in the image, Man was created in the image and likeness of the divine. So there's an idea in the Mishra of that what the divine is, who this God is, is actually half male and half female. Like two sides. The one being total. And that initially Adam was the one, the masculine and the feminine as one. And then later on, the rib is the splitting and the split off between the male and the female. But the divine is the one. So each one of us have to come back to bring back together the masculine and feminine in ourselves. And part of this concept of forgiveness is a feminine idea. It's that idea of allowing the vulnerability of self to come in, while the other part is the guard itself, right? Very guarded. Because if I put my guard up, you're not going to be able to do this to me anymore. But I've lost a sense of wholeness and who I need to be. Yodhe Vodhe calls to us to bring back the oneness, the true oneness, the at one man. We are all meant to be. Now, I, uh, I loved when 
Candy was reading the Deuteronomy um, with our words of wisdom as Phil was reading them. Because it's true. It's that idea of what we're asked to do. So the idea in Yom Kippur is the fast, right? It's the fast. The fast is that time of reflecting. Stop worrying about what you're going to eat. It's amazed when you think about it. When you don't have to worry about what to eat in a day, do you know how much time you get? Really, think about it. Think about it. How many of us are concerned about what's for breakfast, what's for lunch, what's for dinner, did I eat, didn't I eat, how does it taste, where am I going to go, how am I going to get it? That's a lot of extra time you got when you don't have to think about that, right? So, when you don't have to think about that, maybe we can do a little deeper thinking. So, as our words of, win, of a wisdom had tell to us, look at the words and see. Also, look at this prayer of peace. Did you see where that prayer of peace came from? Right? right? This key, the prayer of peace, was found on a piece of wrapping paper in Ravensbrück, the largest concentration camp for women in Germany. So here is a woman who is in a concentration camp writing this prayer. O Lord, remember not only the men and women of goodwill, but also those of ill will. This is opening up a deep, deep sense of forgiveness, at one moment. But do not remember all the suffering they have afflicted upon us. Remember the fruits we brought thanks to this suffering. Our comradeship, our loyalty, our humanity, the courage, the generosity, the greatness of heart which has grown out of this. Has anybody here prayed for patience and all of a sudden everything in their life started coming up where they had to start learning patience? Right? The universe is trying, always giving us opportunities to better ourselves, to be clearer channels, as the, the, our, our chant said today, to be chariots for the divine, to be clear channels. This week also celebrates, we come up on the celebration of St. Francis of Assisi, and he did that prayer, Lord, make me a channel of your peace. It's all coming up, channels, clear, clear channels. And what we have to do is to look at this stuff, what can I do to turn this around? This is all we all learned about. We did the work when we did the untethered soul. We did the work about things happen to us in our lives. We were listening to our Buddhist Sangha and then we have, there is suffering in the world. We know this, life is difficult. We know this, we've heard this over and over again. Why are we surprised when it gets difficult for us as an individual? Why do we go to the self-pity part? Why do we go to the blame others part when we just say, this is part of the journey? There can be joy in the journey rather than condemnation, self-pity, regret, and resentment. The lesson of Yom Kippur is to look at all this from a bigger picture. Not from the microscopic, poor me situation of our lives. Of just even the present moment of our lives. Because if you step back on Yom Kippur and look at the bigger picture of your life, where you've come from, how much you've been through, the strength that you truly do have to prevail, and you access that, and turn that over to the divine for more strength and empowerment. yod hey vod hey I will, no matter what, trust in something higher, greater, stronger, eternal, despite what the world may present. Despite what the world may present to me. And it has to start with all the little things of our lives. 
I was in the city at uh, an event, the UN uh, NGO, for the celebration of the 150th birthday of Mahatma Gandhi this week. And I took the subway in, and I'm, I mean, the train into the subway and going all around. And it's, if you know the UN is on the other side of town, which is not convenient for the LARR, or as a comedian said, the lur. <laughs> Because I didn't know what was a lur. I once said, take the, they just, you know, take this, and he was always reading it as lur, L I R R. Different perspectives, right? You don't realize it. We just, we take too many things for granted, and that's an easy thing to do. But uh, we had been out dancing, my lovely husband and I, and I had really hurt my knee. So I should not have been walking all over the city that day, and the pain was going right through me. And I kept saying, I welcome it, I'm grateful, I'm here, and just embracing it, just embracing it. It wasn't easy. And every time I felt like it was harder and harder to get moving, and I'm coming home in rush hour now, and everybody's moving, and I'm not moving so well. But embracing it, accepting it, right? even though it's very painful. And then getting in a subway in the midst of rush hour. <clears throat> you know those packed subways? And there's homeless person laying in the subway, in the train. Not usually in the train, taking up at least five or six seats with all their bags and all their stuff passed out. Very, the, the, the smell was, you know, very, very difficult. And I'm sitting there saying, my God, please send some light and love. Not only to this person, but to all the people that have to take this train for the next hour to get home. And are accepting the circumstances of their lives. There's so much. And then we were had our healing circle here. And I'm on the table that night. And it came to me, I saw this homeless person as a little boy, somebody's beloved little child that they were nurturing and holding and loving. There's such a bigger picture to everything, no matter what, no matter what's going on. This day, that's why they're called the days of awe, the days of the bigger picture. That awesome should come back to be, it should be used only for majestic views. That's awe. A humble picture of the universe, awe. The days of this awe, the awesomeness. There's always something else going on, something bigger something wondrous, there is the opportunity to be at one with the divine. So we think about what gets in the way. So these are the things that write on the paper. What gets in the way between me and my relationship with myself, who I truly believe myself to be? What gets in the way of my relationship with others? and who I think they should be or shouldn't be or what's going on with them and my fear of those things. And what gets in the way of my relationship with the world? You know, when we're afraid of what's going to happen in the world and what's happening in the world, we're not sending love. We're not sending love. So I'm going to share another story that I was reminded of, again, at the energy circle. There's a lot going on. Those of you who didn't come, you missed out. But we had uh, the, the story of the, a car accident. It was a major car accident. And the woman who was in the car accident believed that she had left her body. And as she left her body, she could hear all the things that other people were saying in the cars behind her. Oh, now I'm going to be late. What's going on? This is terrible. All the grumbling and, and everything. But out of one car was this beautiful light. Because somebody was in the midst of that traffic sending prayers to whoever was in the accident, whatever was going on. And they were able to see the license plate of that car. Later on, when they got better, they told the story. And they actually went and found out who owned that car 
knocked on their door and thank them for their prayers and their love and their time of need.